Okay, welcome. We're going to do um, a little camera tracking in Blender. And in order to do that, you've got to know two things. One, uh, for the way I've got this thing rigged, you need to understand object parenting and the constraint uh, called track to. So let's get started. I am going to take a top view. And you can see uh, down here, you can see all the keys that I'm going to be uh, going through here. I'm going to get it out of perspective, put it in orthographic, and also get it into um, wireframe. It's a little easier to see. In order to do this, we want to have the camera parented to a null object, an empty object. So let's move. 3D cursor is now in the center, and we want it to select it, which is the camera. You can see it popped from the center over to the camera. We want to add an empty object. I like looking at the outliner. Let's rename that empty object. We're going to name this camera parent. Camera parent. Let's do the parenting. We're going to the way Blender works is the uh, selection order is how the parent is chosen. If you had five objects, the last object you selected would be the parent. So I want the camera to be the child. Hold down the shift he key, hit the camera parent. No, say control P. We're going to set it to object. And you can see these two are selected. And you can see it doesn't actually disappear, but the camera is now attached to this. Let's. Um, Let's open up another window here and make this the camera view. So now you can see that when I grab the uh, null object and move it around, the camera moves around also. In order to get the track to constraint working, we're going to select the camera. We need to have it running along perfectly along the y-axis. Here's another thing I like to do. I like to keep this n panel, uh, the transforms open for whatever I'm looking at. Let's run the camera right down the y-axis, which would be uh, 90 degrees in y, or in x, 0 in y, 0 in z. And you can see the camera is looking straight down the y-axis. And you can see there's no view. You can kind of see the lamp over here on the side. Let's make it look at the cube. In order to do that, Here's what we've been shooting towards here, which is selecting the camera parent, going to the constraints panel, and under tracking, go to track two. You can see it's red in here, which says, hey, you're not completely set up yet. We want to track to the cube. And boom, it snaps right to the cube. So now, when we grab the parent and move it around, it tracks perfectly to the, um, the cube, and actually a little too perfectly, but we'll fix that um, We'll fix that a little bit later. Let's go to the front view, and you can kind of see that as I move the parent around, the cube stays right in the middle of the scene, right? Now, one little thing you have to be careful of and is that the way you have this set up right now, let's say that we put this in zero right here. I'm going to top view. I'm going to go ahead and make some other blocks here, D, just so you can see this thing happen. If uh, Let's go to the side view. If we have the camera perfectly in line with the object that it's uh, tracking to, watch what happens when it flies over. Once it becomes perfectly lined up, you'll see that snap. All of a sudden, the um, the camera, or not the camera, but the camera parent spins around 180 degrees. And what it's doing is the code, the way it's set up in order to do tracking, it's trying to make sure that um, this Z stays up all the time. So at this point now, Z being up is facing in the opposite direction. The old joke is um, a guy goes into the doctor and says, doctor, it hurts when I do that. And then the doctor says to the patient, well, you know, don't do that, right? Hilarious. Okay, so there are tricks 
um, you could do to, in order to eliminate that kind of a problem, like offsetting it. And if you don't like it being in an angle, there's other things you could do to fix that too. So let's go, um, let's do a little animation here. Let's, uh, I'm going to put this back at zero and get in the side view. Get in the side view. Let's say we're going to look at it like this. Now, everything that's been happening as we move the um, cube around, as we move the, the object, the look at object, it stays perfectly in the middle of the scene, which may work for some cases, but most stories being told visually, you don't want your main character locked dead center in the middle of the screen. In order to fix that, we're going to create a separate object. We're going to create a separate object that the camera is looking at that's going to be invisible to the camera. Okay, so we're looking, here's the cursor, 3D cursor. Here's the cube. Let's go ahead and say Shift S, cursor to selected. We're going to create another empty. Let's make it with arrows. And we're going to call this empty, we're going to call this empty camera look at. Camera look at. And the way that works is we're going to go back, select the camera parent, go back to the constraints. Instead of looking at the cube, let's look at the camera look at. And since they're both dead center, you know, you didn't see this jump at all. Let me get rid of this over here. But now, if we grab the camera look at and move it around, you could see that we're controlling where the camera's looking at. And when you go to render, it'll be invisible. Now let's do a little thing here to kind of bring things back to where we were, which is we're going to take the camera look at and we're going to make a child, make it a child of the cube. And you'll see why here in a second. We'll control P. That'll make that. And since it's lined up perfectly, you didn't see any kind of snapping there. It is still, if we roll this open in the outliner, you could still move this over and it follows where we're going to look at. Let's create a little animation. Let's do that. Let's say we want this thing to be off to the side here and at frame one. I like creating animation by having this panel open and just going over top and saying, I want to set a keyframe in the location. Let's go to frame, let's say 90. And we want this thing to be dead on locked to the cube here. And we'll set another keyframe. So now what we've done is we've created, I'm going to move the timeline and it kind of slides right in there, right to our object. Um, at the same time, let's get a side view down here. At the same time, let's go to, let's go to the camera. Let's go to the camera down here and we're going to move this up a little bit higher maybe. And we're going to say, let's have the camera at the same time this is moving across, we'll have the camera drop down. So we'll say, let's do it over here. I, and we'll go to frame 90 and we'll have the camera drop down like this, like right there, I. So now we have two, we have this compound motion happening where the camera is up in the thing, up in the sky, and it, it drops down, it cranes down at the same time that our, uh, our look at is moving to the block. Now that we've parented the, the camera look at to the cube, our hero, we can do something else. Let's go to frame, Let's go to frame like 85. Let's say at frame 85, we want the cube to, it's going to be, boom, it's going to be locked right there. And then at 180, we're going to have the cube move up. We're going to have it do like one of those lunar lander kind of take off into space things, right? And we'll set one there. All right, so now we've created three little sets of animation where it pans and then drops down and tilts up. And let's say that you're doing this for a director and he's like, oh man, that's all wonderful, but I, I want the camera to not follow the cube as it goes up. I want it to go off the top of the screen. Well, you can do that. You can animate the camera look at separate from the 
cube, let's say that we're going to take the camera look at, I selected the camera look at, and at the end of the scene, we're calling like frame 180, we'll let this go off the top. We just let it drag, we'll let the look at kind of drag behind. We'll say I, let's make this end like 200. Boom, and let's play this. Kind of moves over, takes up off the top of the screen. He's like, oh man, it's beautiful, exactly what I wanted, only I don't want I don't want the I don't want to stop in the middle of the screen. I want the cube to be, let's say, a third of the way over this way um, on screen left. Well, I mean that's all possible. And since we've had all these things linked together, it's fairly easy. Let's go to um, let's go right here. We're going to say we want the look at, we want the camera look at to not go all the way to the cube. Let's say that we want it to fall slightly short. Like right there. Okay, so then that way the cube stays screen left. So we'll set that eye right there. And then let's go to the camera parent and let's adjust that. So let's, let, let me go back. I was, I want to, I want to look at my numbers. What is that 2.4? in the in X. Let's go to camera parent and we'll say 2.4 and it kind of leaves us squared up there which is kind of which is nice. So now when it slides in there it stays camera left and it takes off just like we want. The goal of creating this little rig is that we can use it to tell the story. That's the important part. We don't want to be fighting the software. We want to create things that make it easier for us to be able to tell the story. So I hope this helps. Uh, if you have any questions or if you have any requests, please feel free to, uh, to post them. And thanks for watching.